Let's get up and praise his name. Let's get up and praise his name. Come on, let's get up and praise his name. Don't you delay. Jesus coming. I want to say to the people that are watching us live on the internet, good morning. And as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. And I do emphasize the Lord's Sabbath day. Because the world has just messed up, sisters and brothers. Everything is wrong. I mean everything. This is what's so bad about it. Most of us was raised in the church. Most of us have had some pastor or minister that we revered and that we loved and we honored, and then you come into the real truth and you find out that they've been lying to you. That is the hard part, sisters and brothers. That's what I've learned, learned over these 40 some years, that the hardest part for people that come into the truth is to acknowledge the fact that they've been lied to, and that really bothers people. And sometimes people kick against the word instead of rolling with the truth. And one of the things that's been uh, uh, lied to you about is what this lesson is about. The title of this lesson is Born Again, a change in body, not a change in mind. Born Again, a change in body and not a change in mind. You know, somebody, some, some people will think a little bit. When I use the word born again, why do I use the word again? So if I'm going to do something again, then I find out and look back and see what did I do before. And the only thing that fit born is when you was born of your mother into this world. That was not a mind change. That was a physical advent. So now if you're going to be born again, that means you're going to do something over. And this is what we want to show you, sister and mother. Because just like you were born in the man family, you will have to be born in the God family. And just like you was whatever you was not a world before you was born in the man family, when you come into man's existence, you were something else. And when you get into God's family, it's going to be something else. But we don't understand that, sisters and mothers. Is because we have been taught everything is between the ears. You know why we think everything is between the ears? Because we don't have no faith. The Lord is blessing me. I know he's blessing But you're hungry and you're broke and you're living in the park. Where is your blessing? Well, I'm breathing, so is the dog and the cat. But we spiritualize it because we don't have faith. If we really believe in God, we acknowledge, Lord, I'm kind of up against it now. I'm waiting on my blessing, but I'm going to serve you on any condition. Your blessing will come. Right. Yes, it will. You don't have to lie to yourself. Right. We're going to start this in St. John, the third chapter. This is what Jesus was dealing with Nicodemus. I heard a whole lot of preachers tell, say, what, if I was Nicodemus, I would have said, Nicodemus asked some real good questions. That's why he got some answers. See, in order for you to get the right answer, you have to ask the right question. And people don't do that, sisters and brothers. I can have people call in sometime, and I talk to them. And they don't call in to learn. They call in to challenge somebody. I say, you don't even know enough to challenge. At least read a little bit and call me back and challenge me. You know, it's, it's, it, 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 and, and uh, I don't be nasty about it. That's just a fact. I can't show you anything because, you know, it's just like a, a man that's physically blind and you keep telling him, well, here's the car. Where's the car? Well, here's the car. Where's the car? Well, you, you're wasting your time. He can't see. <laughs> but this conversation went on with Jesus and Nicodemus. We're going to start at verse 3, uh, verse 1, rather. St. John 3 and 1. Go ahead. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, uh -huh. a ruler of the Jews. Now, I mean, a ruler of the Jews, that means he was in the ministry, sisters and brothers. He was a part of the priesthood because the Romans ruled the Jews as a nation. 
So the only uh, uh, autonomy they gave the Jews at that time was religious autonomy. We ain't going to interfere. Even, even uh, 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 Pilate asked the Pharisees, why don't y'all just deal with it? Well, you know, this is a man here. We can't do this with him. But the whole thing is, in other words, they can stone a woman. But the whole thing was, he was a ruler of the Jews. This man, this was a religious leader. He supposed that known that. Go ahead and read. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, uh -huh. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, that, and, and he acknowledged that. But what did Jesus say? Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Go ahead. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now he made a statement. Except the man be born again, he cannot see. Let alone get in it. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus asked him a question which is a reasonable question to me. Not a foolish question. There were a lot of preachers. That was a foolish question. It was a reasonable question. What did he say to him? Go ahead and read. Nicodemus saith unto him, uh -huh. How can a man be born when he is old? Uh -huh. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now that's what it would look like. You was born the first time you come from your mother's womb. So how can I be being old? Well, can I go back into my mother's womb? If you're going to do something again, that means to repeat it, don't it? Right. Make sense to me? I had a lot of ministers see Nicodemus. He didn't understand, see. That's a, per that's a perfectly reasonable question. Go ahead and read. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh -huh. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, uh -huh. he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. This water is talking about the word, sisters and brothers. It's not talking about the baptism. The word is going to get you to the baptism. But in other words, what he see that Nicodemus had a problem here. <laughs> he didn't understand the word. In other words, if you, if you accept, you get some knowledge, you won't understand none of this. Go ahead and read. That which is born of the flesh uh -huh. is flesh. Uh -huh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That is a clear separation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That which is born of the flesh, everybody in here are flesh, sisters and brothers. He said, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Mm -hmm. Then he started to give you things that can happen if you were born of the spirit. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Uh -huh. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, uh -huh. but canst not tell whence it cometh, Go ahead. and whither it goeth. Uh -huh. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. He said, now look, the wind blow where it will, and it come right on by you, whatever it decides to do, you can hear it, but you can't see it. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. In other words, born again. And if you was born again, you could walk right on by me if you decide, and I wouldn't even know. It's just like when you used to have his brother in the park all the time. His main ministry was, you must be born again. I said, look here, brother. If you were born again, you like the wind, you can walk right on by me. I won't see you. But I'm going to tell you, if I see you, I'm going to knock you out. I was young and crazy then, I would have knocked him out. That's been 40, don't cost to 40 years ago and he ain't walked by me yet. Every now and then I see him at the bank, I just look at him and he look at me. But if you are born of the Spirit, you can walk right on here. Some of the angels that are under the chains of darkness could be sitting there. Enoch could be sitting right in one of these seats. Yeah. The Lord could be sitting right in one of these seats. If he decide to, be, decide to be seen, he will. If he do not decide to be seen, he will not. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit or that's born again. These things, sisters and brothers, because now you are not what you used to be. You are something else when you're born again. This old thing, well, I hear people, since I've been born again, I'm looking at them, right? Why are you looking at me? Because I can see you. What does that mean? That's not even worth talking about. Let's go into St. John, the 20th chapter. We're going to show you something that Jesus did that he had never done before. 
he rose from the dead. You know, when they tried to kill him two, three times, what he do is he go into the crowd of people and get lost in the crowd. Right. You know, <laughs> Jesus knew how to step it off. He knew, he knew how to do a, tra- a, a strategic retreat. That's why, that's why when all them guys in Washington Park wanted to whoop me, I mean, all of them. I ain't never seen the, the Christian, the Muslim, and the Israelites, <laughs> and the Moors wanted to whoop on one brother. <laughs> Because they're out there teaching that foolish stuff the white man is the devil. I said, y'all tell me something. I said, look over at that building, at that, that third, uh, uh, that, that with, the, with the banister on it. If you get a white person, and a man, and throw him off the building, he hit the sidewalk, he is dead. Now y'all going to tell me that God threw the white man clean from heaven. He hit the ground, got up and dusted himself off, and walked over and put us in the pressure. I said, I've seen some stupid people, but y'all take the cake. Boy, they got upset at me. <laughs> I went on down here, and they were finna do me. <laughs> I'll never forget this Muslim that had a brown fez on his head. Let's whoop that N word. <laughs> but the Lord always have a ram in the bush. Yes, he does. Had this brother say, wait a minute now, wait a minute now. The brother got a point there. And they started looking at him, and while they were looking at him, I went on down there. <laughs> In fact, that was in 72. I had a 72 New Yorker brown. I got out and I gave him about two, three weeks to cool off. Because, sisters and brothers, it don't make sense. I don't care if a thousand people quote a lie, it is a lie. You understand? So now, let's show you the reaction of a person that's been born again. 20 and 1. St. John 20 and 1. Okay, read it. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, uh-huh. when it was yet dark, Go to the sepulchre, uh-huh. and see if the stone taketh away from the sepulchre. Uh-huh. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, Go ahead. and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Now this is learning something on your way to learning something, sister and brother. Jesus rose from the dead, right? How much of them did the woman find that? So why is you going to tell me at a funeral that, that they, that's not Miss, Miss Jones there in that box and I'm looking at her? Shouldn't be not her either, should it? That she's in heaven looking down. Why am I seeing her? Skip down to verse 19 and go ahead. Then the same day of the evening, uh-huh. being the first day of the week, go ahead. when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled uh-huh. for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, that same day, in the evening, the apostle was there inside, all of them sitting there talking, and all of a sudden, Jesus walked right on up in the midst of them, and they didn't see him until he materialized in front of them. He said, peace be unto you. Go ahead. What verse is that? That was the end of 19. Go ahead. And when he had, had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. He had to show them his hands where he had been injured, sisters and brothers. But they were scared. But he had never done that before. Skip down to verse 24 and go ahead. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Uh huh. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, the prints of the nail, in his hands, the prints of the nail, and put my fingers into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. That's a reasonable thing. Hey, man, because still the apostles did not understand the resurrection. Understanding didn't really start to flow to the apostles until after the day of Pentecost. So he said, somebody put my finger in the nail hole and I thrust my hand in the side where the, where the spear went. I ain't going to believe it. Go ahead and read. And after eight days again, his disciples were within uh-huh. and Thomas with them. Go ahead. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Did it again. You know why? Because he had been born again. He just walked right on in there now and said, peace be unto you. Go ahead and read. Then saith he to Thomas, Uh Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. Go ahead. And be not faithless, but believing. Uh Uh-huh. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. That's when Thomas realized I'm dealing with a different being here. 
You understand? I walked around. I believed in Jesus. I believed what he said. But nowhere had he ever been called God by anybody before me. But then Thomas realized, hey, he ain't man no more. My Lord and my God, if he had said that before he rose from the dead, it would have been blasphemy even to say it to Jesus. Because Jesus called himself the son of man because he was among men. So then that's when he realized, hey, this is not the guy we walked around with for three years. This is a different guy altogether. He ain't man no more. He is God. Why? Because he had been born again. Into what family? Into God family. Paul made this observation. Let's go on to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, rather. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Because this whole thing, sisters and brothers, nobody pays no attention to the word. Then when you don't understand, you're going to come up with you an answer. You're just going to concoct you an answer. That's how you got the guys walking around playing with poison the snakes. Because they don't understand when the Lord said you're going to tread upon scorpions and on snakes. He ain't talking about walking on real poison snakes. Then when one of them bites somebody, which is not too long ago, and the cat died, right? Well, you see, the problem with him, he didn't have no faith. No, the problem with him was he was stupid. The Lord told Noah that the blood of man was going to be required by every beast when he brought him off the boat. You should have listened. You don't play with snakes. First Corinthians 15, we're going to start at verse 8. 15, uh, verse 1, rather. 15 and 1. Go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, uh -huh. which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. You got to stand in it. Go ahead and read. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Now, he said, and, and see, the Lord always have his writers careful. People don't pay no attention. By which you are also saved, if you keep in memory what I have taught to you. Lest you believe in vain for nothing. In other words, you're not saved once and always saved. No. This is a day thing, daily from, from day to day. You got to walk this walk. I wish you could. I got saved 40 years ago. Hey, I'm saved. I ain't got to worry about it. I can do anything I want now because I am saved. That's a pretty good deal, ain't it? <laughs> that dog don't hunt. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. And that's what, and this is what people don't understand about Paul. And like all the apostles, they only delivered what they had already received, what the prophets had written. Nothing new. Go ahead and read. How that Christ died for our sins uh -huh. according to the scriptures. According to the scripture. Go ahead and read. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. According to the scripture. That's why I don't understand why people don't understand who Christ is. That's my Hebrew brother. If you understood the scripture, you would have known this guy the first time they wrote anything about him. Go ahead and read. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. Uh -huh. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. Go ahead. Of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are falling asleep. Go ahead. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also. He said, now he was seen of all these guys, but last of all, he was seen of me also. Go ahead and read. As of one born out of due time. As one born out of due time. In other words, as one that's born before the time to be born again. Time is not here yet. He says, so he appeared to me as one born out of due time. Let's see what one uh, 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 looks like or what he put forth when he's born again and walks in his real strength. See, Jesus reduced himself, but he didn't do it when he met Paul because Paul was a persecutor of the church. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians, the second, uh, uh, 12th chapter. Paul was a persecutor of the church. In fact, when the Lord converted Paul, the book said, then the church had peace all over. That Paul was a terrible actor. People don't know who they're dealing with when they're dealing with Paul. He said, you know, for what order? He said, Pharisee, concerning the law, he said, perfect. I mean, that Paul did not move one way or the other. And he would kill a rock. 
People don't understand this guy. But the Lord introduced himself to him. Second Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Because first thing he's going to tell you, he met him. Okay. When did he meet him? 12 and 1. Go ahead. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. Uh -huh. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Go ahead. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Uh -huh. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Uh -huh. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. Now, you know, people talk about, see, Paul didn't know whether he was in the body. I just say, he ain't talking about him. Right. He's talking about the man that he knew. Whether he was in the body, what? Flesh and blood body, I can't tell. Or out of it, I can't tell. He was not talking about himself, sister and brother. People always talk about out of the body experience. You ain't got no out of the body experience. You've been smoking or drinking something. <laughs> or something that hits you on the head and you delusional. You don't get out of this body, sister and brother. And we're going to show you that. Go ahead and read. God knoweth. Uh-huh. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Was Paul caught up to the third heaven? Go ahead and read. And I knew such a man, uh -huh. whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. He said, whether he was in, whether he was in the body or out, I can't tell. Now, let me show you why Paul couldn't tell. Now, let's go into Acts the ninth chapter. Acts the ninth chapter. Paul was talking about Jesus. He wasn't talking about himself being out of the body. And people have read this, and now all you hear people all on television, they're supposed to be... Talking about the near-death experience, I was out of the body looking down on myself. I said, I can't believe I'm listening to this. But then when I listen to some of the doctrines that's being taught in some of these churches, I guess I can believe. I'm telling you now, if you ever look down and see your body laying down, you are delusional. Pray to God to put your mind back in the right place. Acts 1, 9 and 1. Let's, let's show you why Paul said he couldn't tell. 9 and 1. Go ahead and read. And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. That's what Paul's first name, Paul's name was Saul. Gentiles like to give you nicknames, okay? So they put Saul, Paul, and we've been calling him Paul ever since. But Paul was a, was a Benjamite. And everybody's named after somebody, mostly in Israel, after somebody in their family. And the first king of Israel was named Saul. So when it says Saul breathing out threat, this is talking about Paul against the church. Go ahead and read. Went unto the high priest uh -huh. and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogue. Go ahead. That if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, uh -huh. he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. See, this guy, wasn't, he wasn't jiving. He didn't care a woman, didn't make no difference. If he figured you was dealing with pagan or blaspheming God, he brought you chain back to the room to put you in jail, whatever you are. So he wanted a letter so he can go somewhere else and bring the people back. Go ahead and read. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Uh -huh. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Go ahead. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, uh -huh. Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? See, all he saw was a light shine from heaven. I mean, this is a bright light. And he heard the voice, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Go ahead and read. And he said, uh -huh. Who art thou, Lord? Go ahead. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Uh -huh. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. See, how do you persecute Jesus? Because he's running and destroying his church that he set behind People don't understand when they lay a hand on the servant of God, they are touching the apple of the Father's eye. And you are persecuting the one that he sent, him. And don't think that he's going to let you live it down. But most people don't understand, uh, 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 Paul suffered more than all of the apostles. You know why? Because he had done more damage than all the apostles. The Lord collects. He said, who are you? He said, I'm Christ. I'm the one that you are uh, persecuting. You can't kick against the prick. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Go ahead. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. But what happened to Saul? Go ahead. And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. The Lord showed him, let him see him in his strength. 
He couldn't make out who he was, but that's why I said one born out of due season. He's like a big light. It's so bright that it blinded so. Mm -hmm. You don't shine like that. <laughs> Only spirit beings shine like that. Let's give you some example. Let's go into Daniel the 12th chapter. Daniel the 12th chapter. That's why I know that God got the angels and Enoch on the chains of darkness. Because what man, you, Enoch, you know where he is all the time. Be a great big old flashlight just walking. There Enoch is. Because one thing I learned by dealing with the word of God, that spirit beings are beings of light, sisters and brothers. Daniel 12, we're going to start at verse 1. Now this is talking about the great tribulation here. But then we ain't going to deal with tribulation because that's another lesson. Daniel's 12 and 1. Daniel's 12 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And at that time shall Michael stand up. Uh -huh. The great prince would stand it for the children of thy people. Go ahead. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. That's the great tribulation, sisters and brothers. At the end of the great tribulation, the Lord going to deliver his people. But look what he says now. Go ahead and read. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Uh -huh. Some to everlasting life. Go ahead. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now that's the whole, the Lord told you that. Jesus told you that, didn't he? But go ahead and read. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Uh -huh. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. These are the ones that's been born again. You're going to shine like the firmament and you're going to be bright like the stars. But the world ain't ready for that yet, sisters and brothers. That's why I know during the thousand year millennium period, the spirit beings going to either operate in dark, in, in, in uh, uh, dark, in other words, invisible, or they are going to appear as me. Because if they come and they blind us, you saw what happened to Saul, didn't you? Blinded him, sister and brother. But let me go and show you another thing that people try and put Elijah and Moses in heaven. That's because they don't read the book. Let's go into Matthew, the 16th chapter. And in Matthew, the 17th chapter, it showed that Jesus was talking to Moses and Elijah. See, they're in heaven. I said, sometime you have to read a little before the chapter. Because the Bible, sisters and brothers, was not written in chapters and verses. It was just written. Mm -hmm. And then you knew what the end was when you got to the end. So man decided to make it easier, and I thank God that he did. Come up with chapters, come up with punctuation, commas, periods, colon, semicolon. All of these to make it easier. However... If you don't have no understanding, sometimes if they put a comma in the wrong place, it can change the whole mindset. And you go in a different direction. And sometimes they put chapters in the wrong place. This chapter is in the wrong place. However, we're going to correct it. Matthew 16, and we're going to start reading at verse 24, because it's talking about the Lord coming. 16 and verse 24. Okay, read it. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, uh -huh. If any man will come after me, Go ahead. let him deny himself uh -huh. and take up his cross and follow me. Now that's what a lot of people don't want to serve the true and living God. Because <laughs> you don't want to deny yourself. You want to do whatever you feel like doing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to follow the Lord and going to follow him, you've got to deny yourself to come after him. Skip down to verse 27 and go ahead. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father uh -huh. with his angels. Uh -huh. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. You come out of church and say, you didn't have to have no works. Christ did it all, right? It, did, did, does, isn't this contrary here? Every man according to his works. Go ahead and read. Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. You see what he's saying? There'll be some here that shall not die. There's some of the 12 apostles. Mm -hmm. Some among his 12 apostles shall not die until they see Jesus coming in his, in his kingdom. Is the kingdom here? Yes. But let's see what he meant then. We're going to go right into the 17th chapter and verse 1. See, just remove the chapter out the way. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And instead of this being verse 1, it should have been verse 29. Go ahead and read. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter. James. And after six days, six days after what? After he made that statement, didn't he? And after six days, he take James and Peter. Go ahead and read. And John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart. Go ahead. And was transfigured before them. Uh huh. And his face shined as the sun. Go ahead. And his raiment was white as the light. Uh huh. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Now that let me know one thing that Moses and Elijah going to be in the kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? But what happened to Jesus? He showed them his true form. He shined like a light. Mm -hmm. Because Immortals are beings of light system. But, oh, we had the same. They had the same thing we have. Otherwise, we couldn't be made in their image. So I don't see nobody around here. I'm not here. Somebody said, "Well, since I got born again, I'm just looking. I'm gonna see if they're gonna illuminate." <laughs> you know, just think about it. this. Is how simple the word is. This is pure simplicity. You know, Moses dealt with angels, but finally Moses dealt with God because he wanted to get close to God and he wanted to talk to him. Let me show you what happened to Moses. Let's go into Exodus the 34th chapter. Exodus chapter 34. That's why I know what happened to Enoch. You understand? He hung out with the Lord too long. He said, I got to do something with you, mister. Exodus 34. And we're going to start at verse 1. Because Moses had asked the Lord to show himself to him. Because when he went up there the first time and he got the Ten Commandments, he got mad when he saw Israel had made that pay and calf and making sacrifice. He got angry and threw the stones out of his hand and he broke them. But what did the Lord say? Verse 1, go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first. Go ahead. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. The words of the Ten Commandments. Now think about it, sisters and brother, Because if you come here, you're going to have to learn something on your way to learning something. People say that the law ain't no more. Why is it that this same God, and I can show you, that was Jesus, go tell Moses, you... Cut you out some more stone and come up here and I'm going to write the same word. He said, well, don't worry about more. You did offense. I'm going to change that old law anyway. He didn't say that, did he? No, he, didn't. he said, I want you to come up here because I'm going to write these words over again. Mm -hmm. Because the Ten Commandments, those are the words that the Lord made a covenant with us. Go ahead and read. And be ready in the morning. And come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. Now I want you to come up there and present yourself. Skip down to verse 4 and go ahead. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. Uh -huh. And Moses rose up early in the morning uh -huh. and went up in, unto Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And oh, yeah. took in his hand the two tables of stone. You know, you see, you saw in Ten Commandments, you saw Moses broke the stone, right? Mm -hmm. But you didn't see him rewrite them, did you? Maybe somebody else had something to do with that. So he got him two stones and he went on back up there again on the mountain with the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. See, the Lord was with him, sisters and brothers. He in the cloud because he didn't want to see him right now. He couldn't see his face, but he was there. He stood with him. Go ahead and read. And the Lord passed by before him uh -huh. and proclaimed the Lord. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. And Moses couldn't handle it, sisters and brothers. That was too much for him. Skip down to verse 8 and read it. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. I'm going to tell you something. That's why you have to be careful what you ask for, sisters and brothers. I tell people all the time, I ain't never seen no angel of the Lord. I ain't never heard a word. But one time. I was trying, I was praying, I'll never forget, I was living in an apartment, and I asked the Lord, I, I said, I need to see something, I want to see an angel or something, and I'm going to tell you, I was serious, and I fell to present, and I chickened out. <laughs> no, 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 please, I don't want to see, I'm, I didn't say the word, but my mind was racing. No, I felt him there, and I chickened out, and it just went away. I ain't never asked no more. 
Sound like Moses. Moses fell on his face, but I fell on my face in my mind. I chicken out, and that's the God's truth. Yeah. I knew he was there. But no, I don't want to see him. No, no. He went away. So Moses hung out with God all this time. Skip down to verse 28. Down to verse 28. See, sisters and brothers, I know he is there. I have felt it, but I was too scared to deal with it. Sometimes I think about, what if I had gone through? No, uh uh-uh. I'm about to be walking around really acting crazy. People think I'm crazy already. Verse 28, go ahead. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. Uh huh. And he did neither eat bread nor drink water. Uh huh. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. That's the words of the covenant, sister and brother, the Ten Commandments. That's why I said, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, for my covenant they broke. This is how I'm going to make a new covenant. I'm going to write my word in their mind and record them in their inward part. The same words. Because he's telling, what is a covenant? Agreement between you and God. When you go into that water, you have entered into a covenant. You agreed to do everything he said in the law. Keep pork out your mouth. Keep his commandment. Play the tithe. Do whatever come under that covenant, sisters and brothers. Because all of them, because they tell you on the love the, your father and you love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on these hangs all the law and the prophets. People don't understand that. When you, that's why I tell people, you get in this water, you better know what you're doing because you get in there and go back. You got your problem. Go ahead and read. Verse 29. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony uh-huh. in Moses' hand. Go ahead. When he came down from the mount, that Moses was not, that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So that Moses know that he had started shining, taking on the characteristics of a spirit being. When he come down, Aaron didn't recognize it. Go ahead and read. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. <laughs> I'm Moses. Uh-uh. We don't know who you are. He has started to take on the characteristics of a spirit being. And from that day on, he could not talk to them with his face uncovered. Skip down to verse 32. 32 and go ahead. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with them in Mount Sinai. Uh huh. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. That's why he had to put a veil on. See, the change just started to set in. You couldn't reverse it. This guy who was on his way to being changed, to becoming an immortal. On his way. Go ahead and read. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, uh-huh. he took the veil off uh-huh. until he came out. Go ahead. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Uh-huh. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. Go ahead. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. See, that's what happened to Enoch. Moses just did 40 days. Look what happened to him. Enoch hung out with God for 300 years. He said, Mister, you can't go. I can't take you to heaven. You, you ain't going to die. I'm just going to put the, the change in you around here somewhere. I'm going to put you under the same chains of darkness that the third of the angels are under when I threw Satan out. Walking around here now. Yes. So Moses started to take on the characteristics of God, not man. And God will let you know, I am not a man. Let's go into Numbers, the 23rd chapter. Numbers chapter 23. Go over there and set this, these uh, uh, thermostats over here up to 72 degrees. You're about to give me uh, my sinuses walking papers. 72 degrees. What is it? What, oh, okay, I missed somewhere. Let's go. I'm sorry. Let's go. In the, let's back up to Matthew's. The 13th chapter. Because I want you to look at this. My mistake. Maybe I'm freezing. This, this air condition is freezing my brain up. <laughs> Matthew chapter 13. Go 
because this is something that uh, the Lord wants us to understand. Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to start reading at verse 36. 13. Must have written this backwards. Let's start at verse 34 and we're going to read down to 36. Maybe I got dyslexia this morning. But anyway, verse 34, go ahead. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. Uh -huh. And without a parable spake he not unto them. Go ahead. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying. Uh -huh. I will open my mouth in parables. Go ahead. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Now he did that in Psalms, sisters and brothers. But sometimes you can be speaking plain language, English, but ain't nobody listening. Then that's a parable to them. Go ahead and read. Then Jesus sent the multitude away uh -huh. and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parables of the tares of the field. See, now he gave him the parables of the tares. He said, look, good householder went out and, and planted uh, 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 good wheat. But the next morning when it, when, it, when it rose up, he saw tares among his wheat. They said, we won't. He said, then... The servant said, let us pick these tares out. He said, no, no, I don't want you to go out and remove the tares. Leave them there. I will separate them at the harvest. So they wanted to know what this tare means, what this parable meant. Go ahead and read. He answered and said unto them, uh -huh. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Go ahead. The field is the world. Uh -huh. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Uh -huh. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. These are the people that follow Satan and don't know it. Go ahead and read. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The devil is the one that sold the tares. Turn your mind, turn you against God. Go ahead and read. The harvest is the end of the world. And at the end of the world, he's going to make the harvest. This is even talking about at the end of the thousand-year millennium period, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And the reapers are the angels. Uh-huh. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of, the, of this world. Go ahead. So the tares are going to be gathered and put in the lake of fire. So shall it be at the end of the world. Go ahead and read. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, uh -huh. and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Go ahead. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Uh -huh. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Go ahead. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. That's talking about the father's kingdom then. Then, did you finish that? Whoever is to hear, let him hear. Then shall a righteous shine forth in the kingdom of the Father. He didn't say he is. You understand? Because everybody that's going to make it, that get into the Father's kingdom, they can't be flesh and blood. Right. All of them going to be beings of light. That's why he said the righteous is going to shine forth in the kingdom of their Father. You won't be man no more. You be God, sisters and brothers. But we're going to get around. To, we're going to look at all of this. Because God is not a man. And he told you that. Let's, now let's go into Numbers, the 23rd chapter. Numbers chapter 23. Because these things the Lord put here so we would just simply understand. His word is simple. The stuff that I teach here, sisters and brothers, is simple. All you got to do is just believe what you read. It's so simple. That's why he's talking about the simplicity of Christ. Well, you know, simplicity of Christ. You're talking about New Testament. No, it was Christ that did the talking. It was him that said, let us make man in our own image. Yes. Simple thing like that. People don't even know. Here, brother, don't well, you know, and the father this and the father that. You don't know about the father. And what you do know about the Father, the Son told you, so how are you going to circumvent the Son? Right. It's just all crazy. You understand what I'm saying? But all this come out of ignorance and people do not want to live. Bleed the truth. Look what the Lord said. We're going to read one verse. Verse 19. Verse 19. Go ahead. God is not a man that he should lie. Uh -huh. Neither the Son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Say that, son. So he is not a man that he should lie. 
Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. It's just like now he gave you the Ten Commandments, gave you the Sabbath day, had a man stoned to death for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. Now he's going to come and change it to the first day of the week. Come on, sisters and brothers. Man do stuff like that. God don't. He is God. He called the end from the beginning. That's why I said, shut it not speak it, and it won't happen. He's going to bring it to pass. He got to change his mind about nothing because every decision he makes is the right decision. So he's not a man, sisters and brothers. Because, so if you want to be in his kingdom, this is the Father's kingdom, and you want to be his child, then you have to become God. I ain't talking about spiritually. I'm talking about physical. You know why you have to become God? Because the Lord set the presidents in Genesis. Let's go into Genesis and look at this president. You cannot break this president. He set everything in order. And believe me, sisters and brothers, when you understand this, then a lot of stuff you hear science, scientists and so-called scholars say, you know, they're just simply lying. They don't know what they're talking about. Genesis 1, and we're going to hit verse 11. Genesis 1, and start at verse 11. 1 and 11. Read it. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, uh -huh. whose seed is in itself uh -huh. upon the earth, and it was so. So he started with the vegetation. Let it bring seed after its kind, and the fruit tree would seed after their kind, whose seed is in itself, and it was so. Skip down to verse 20 now. We're going to get out to living uh, uh, organ uh, uh, organic, uh, I mean, flesh and blood uh, beings now. Verse 20, go ahead. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life. Uh-huh. And fowls that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. Uh-huh. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. After what? After, the after their kind. Go ahead and read. And every winged fowl after his kind. And every winged fowl after his kind. Go ahead. And God saw that it was good. Uh-huh. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Go ahead. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. You know, he kept using that word, after his kind. Mm -hmm. After his kind. Go ahead and read. Cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Go ahead. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, uh -huh. and cattle after their kind. Go ahead. And everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Go ahead. And God saw that it was good. Uh -huh. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Here, he took a switch there. He didn't say after our kind. Because if you're after your kind, you're just like it. But he said, let us create man. In our image. Big difference. Mm -hmm. Haven't made it yet, sisters and brothers. The correct word for us right now is that we are an unfinished product. This is what man don't understand. Everything after its kind. That kill man come from monkey, don't it? <laughs> in fact, that kills evolution altogether. The only evolution you have in the creation is what you have right now. A butterfly is what first? A caterpillar. And a toad or a frog is what first? A tadpole. It's still like that, isn't it? So if you want to be a frog, you got to be a tadpole first. And even the land-dwelling amphibians, Frogs or toads have to find somewhere with water and lay their eggs because that's the way they produce after their kind. So let's solve the age old question which comes first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken. Because the egg is after the chicken kind. See, the word of God don't leave no loose ends, sisters and brothers. But when it comes to man, 
He said, let's create God, let's create man in our image and after our likeness. Go ahead and read. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air uh-huh. and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Go ahead. So God created man in his own image. Uh-huh. In the image of God created he him. Uh-huh. Male and female created he them. So now, when he created you, you want to know what God looked like? You can look in the mirror. He got eyes and hands, feet, everything that you got. God got. I know when years ago on WVON had a woman come on, they were having this discussion, religious discussion. Well, you see, we are uh, we are children of God. We don't see the spirit being don't have no form. God don't have no form. I said, man, we must be a puff of smoke. Or the amoeba or something. Because we shouldn't have no head, no feet, no eyes. We shouldn't have no form. If God is a spirit and have no form, then whose image are we made into? After. But not after this kind. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That will come later. Now let's go into the second chapter of Genesis. And he's going to bring you into existence. Genesis 2 and verse 7. See, when you come here, you get more than just one lesson. You get a whole lot of little lessons inside of lessons. Because it is the Lord's intention to educate you so you can save yourself. Then Satan can't blindside you. So next time somebody tell you that they're born again, well, come on by me. Let me see if I can hit you. <laughs> if they really believe that they were born again, they would walk right on by you. But being that this brother almost called his name, knew that I was young and crazy, he knew I was going to knock him out. For 40 years, he ain't walked by me yet. Simplicity, sisters and brothers. Simplicity. That's Genesis 2 and verse 7. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his, his nostrils the breath of life. Uh-huh. And man became a living soul. He put a soul inside of man. He became a living man became a living soul. What did he put inside of man then? Breath. Breath of life. I can put a t- pillow over your face and take that away from it. What would you do? It's all that simple. See how simple the word of God is? I mean, too simple. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Uh Uh-huh. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Uh Uh-huh. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. Go ahead. And good for food. Uh Uh-huh. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Go ahead. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, he said, put all of them there. The food tree that you can eat. But then you had the tree of life, which was the Lord himself. People don't know that Jesus walked on this earth. In the very beginning. And the other one was Satan the devil. That let me know that he's, this tree of knowledge of good and evil was cast out before man was created. Otherwise, the Lord would have told him, go on over there and talk with the cat. Go ahead and read. Finish that. That was the end of nine. Skip down to verse 16. And look what he said now. Verse 16. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, uh-huh. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Now, if the Satan had been, this, this is Satan the devil, sister and brother, serving at all, this is all his title. If he was a good angel and still holy, the Lord wouldn't have told his man to stay away from it. But he said, look, you might tree, eat of every tree of the garden, but a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not, may not eat. Go ahead and read. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, uh-huh. thou shalt surely die. And the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. The Lord threatened this man with death, but death was not in existence, sister and brother. Not for man. Now let's see what this man did. Let's go into Genesis, the third chapter, and start at verse 4, 3 and 4. Genesis 3 and 4. Okay, read it. And the serpent said unto the woman, Uh-huh. You shall not surely die. Uh-huh. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, this woman should have ran away from, I mean, straight up. Who are you going to believe, God 
I'll say, go ahead and read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, uh-huh. she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. In other words, she talked with Satan. The fruit that she ate was the fruit of lies. There was no apple involved here. And now, Adam wasn't sitting there, like some preacher was, Adam was standing right there, he was quiet. The book don't say that. If Adam had been there, it would have been over with. No, you better get on cross this garden before I call the wrath of the tree of life on you. You understand? She talked. Then she took the conversation and, gave, and told it to Adam. And what happened? God weighed in. Skip down to verse 22. Verse 22 and go ahead. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. Now, didn't Satan say that? But then he didn't tell it all. Go ahead and read. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Uh -huh. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Now I just learned volume from that statement. Now lest he reach forth his hand and eat of the tree of life and live forever, let's get him away from it. Yeah. What could you have eaten that would got you would have gotten you immortality. The word of God. Anything could be done if you knew how. That knowledge is powerful, sisters and brothers. If you knew how, anything could be done. So the Lord said, look, I ain't gonna let him learn how to live forever. Now he's tainted. He don't know who to listen to. Because <laughs> sisters and brothers, I'm gonna tell you something. When you become God. You have all the power of God. It won't be like the angels. The Lord can handle the angels. But you go, God going to create beings and everything he has. Because that's when Jesus come out the grave. He said, all power in heaven and in earth is given into my hand. All is absolute. So what then does the Father have that you don't have? And Jesus told you, said, look, in his, in his former state, when, his, when he was in the former God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So now, you're going to have a tainted being and give him all the power you got? Boy, that might be the battle of whatever. He can't kill you, you can't kill him. It's just one big knockdown, drag out forever. You understand? So he so said, let's put him out. Go ahead and read. So he drove out the man, uh -huh. and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim Go ahead. and a flaming sword which turned every way Go ahead. to keep the way of the tree of life. He said, look, I don't want you not to keep the way of the Garden of Eden, to keep the way of the tree of life. I don't want this man learning how to live forever because he's tainted now. He can not listen. Look at all the carnage and, 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 and crime and killing and, and whatever, all the... Negative stuff going on in this world. What would happen if you couldn't die? What would happen if Hitler couldn't die? Genghis Khan. You understand? Who this guy to kill all them nurses? What is the speck? You couldn't, they couldn't die and you couldn't kill them. He'd be strangling some woman all the time and she's suffering because she can't die. That's messed up, man. That's the way it would have been. Y'all understand? This man don't understand the implications of, 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 of what God did. You ain't ready yet. And he's still getting you ready. Therefore, you are made in his image and in his likeness. But you're not his kind. Now, let's go into Genesis, uh, uh, Psalm the 82nd chapter because we got a listening problem. A real listening problem. And God had to deal with us. Psalms 87. 82, uh, 82 rather. 87 chapter of Psalms. Psalms 82. This man have a listening problem. He still have a listening problem. Don't want to listen to nothing. He think he's smarter than God. If you ain't that smart, you still have to eat and use the washroom. You still have to take a bath or you're going to stink. I was smart. I get all and you're still getting old. And you aching. Can't get out to bed. I can talk about that. <laughs> if I was smart, I'd take old off me. I'd grow all my hair back and longer. 
I get rid of every wrinkle. <laughs> I return to my physique when I used to be a bodybuilder. <laughs> can't do none of that. So if I can't do that, then who am I? You understand what I'm saying? Psalms 82, let's start at verse 1. This is the Lord talking here. Go ahead and read. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Uh-huh. He judgeth among the gods. Who do you think these gods that he's judging them up? I invite you to join us on the Sabbath day live via the internet. Log on to our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath day live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. If you enjoy our program, we would appreciate your donations to help defer the cost of continuing this work. Send donations to to the Israel of God, 2515 East 75th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60649. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago.